Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Thursday, April the 18th. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. Today, I am grading rookie Adam Gaudet. Yeah, he doesn't even feel like he's a rookie, actually, because, you know, Elias Patterson kind of stole all the rookie news for the Vancouver Canucks, and Gaudet did play five games at the end of the 2017-18 season after finishing his college year, a year where he won the Hobie Baker Award for the best college player. So I think we were we had pretty high expectations, reasonable expectations for Adam Gaudet. He didn't score in those five games that he played last year's season, at the end of last year, but he got into 56 games this season. Uh, well, had five goals, seven assists, so 12 points in those 56 games. Not a massive total, you know, that extrapolates to just, you know, just under 20 points for a full season, a full healthy 82 game season. Played a third line center role mostly between a third or fourth line center role. And when you look at all the stats across the board, they weren't great. He had less than 11 minutes of ice time per game. Um, so that's a number that we want to see obviously go up in, in the future. He only won 40% of his face-offs. Not the best sign if you are a center and you need to take some, some draws and everything. But he was kind of sheltered that way. You know, he didn't take a lot of defensive zone face-offs because of that number. You often saw Bo Horvat or Jay Beagle come over the boards to take those to take those face off. His, you know, possession number is not great. He had a below 50%. Uh, Corzy had a below 100 PDO. So not the best overall. However, I think uh, as a rookie, he was fine. And so I'm going to give him a C plus. A C plus is an average grade. You know, I don't think he's A, excellent or outstanding. I don't think he's a B, good or very good. C plus is average and nothing, you know, nothing wrong with being average in your in your first year in, in the league as a rookie. So what does he do well? Well, he, he, he showed flashes of his offensive ability. And we, knew, we know he has offensive ability from his college days where he, he racked up points. Like I said, he won the Hobie Baker Award. And we, we see that around the net, he does have a nose for the net, uh, a pretty good nose for the net as a rookie. And he, you could say he got unlucky. He could probably have three or four more goals. He had a couple posts. He, had a, he got robbed a couple times. So maybe he could have had you know, close to 10 goals as opposed to only five. So I think offensively he's fine. And he'll get there and we saw some nice, you know, some nice plays throughout the season. We want to see more of them and that's something he needs to work on is his consistency. On defense, I thought he was fine. Um, you know, responsible enough. There are a couple times where you catch him his line getting, you know, getting buried a little bit in their own zone, but that could also be because of who he's playing with as well, not just him. And as a third line center or sometimes on, even on the fourth line depending on Sutter and or Beagle were hurt. You know, you, there's a trickle-down effect. Obviously, you, you need to have your best players on your first couple lines. And after Pedersen, Bester, and Horvat, maybe Levo, Pearson, it, it thins out over time. It thins out pretty quickly on the Canucks. So Adam Gaudet wasn't always playing with the best wingers. You know, he'd be playing with guys like Granlin or or Vertanen, or maybe even, um, you know, a guy like Tim Schaller sometimes, or, or Tyler Mott, whatever it may be. So Adam Gaudet didn't always have the best line mates. So when you look at the 12 points over 56 games, like I said, that's not bad. It's not great, but it is basically third line. You know, if that's 20 points over a season, that's a third line player, a low third line player for sure. So the Canucks, I think, have um, high hopes for this guy, for, for not this guy, for Adam Gaudet. They, they, they um, you know, they see the potential in him. And as he gets more confidence, as, as he gets more experience, as you say, the Canucks coaching staff will show more confidence in him. I think what's really interesting to look at for next year is where is he going to play? There's a hope for, among some of the Canucks fan base that Brandon Sutter gets moved, and then you have your, your four centers, right, of Horvat, Pedersen, Gaudet, and Beagle. Some would argue that Sutter and Beagle are indeed redundant. So there's a hope that Sutter gets moved. Let's say he doesn't get moved. There's nothing wrong with having five centers. This season we saw that there were times where Sutter and Beagle were both injured at the same time. So you want depth at the middle, and you want centers to be playing in the middle, as opposed to like a converted winger like Marcus Granlin, who wasn't very that effective in the center position when he had to play when both center and beagle were out. So there's one school of thought that says keep the five centers and at least you have depth. There's another school of thought that says either move Sutter or Gaudet to the wing. I'd be interested to see that, especially if 
they want Sutter and Beagle to start the season as three, you know, your third and fourth line center. Yeah, they want to keep Gaudet in the lineup as well. Then you have to move him to a wing on the third or fourth line. So I'd be interested to see how he does and to see how his, his game translates to the wing. But he didn't play any wing this season. All 56 games were essentially as a center. So that's one way to keep him in the lineup as well. But overall, I think, uh, especially considering he is a rookie and, and they're not going to rush him into anything and the 11 minutes of ice time kind of proves that, I think Adam Gaudet had an average season and therefore, I give him a C plus. I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what he can do in the future. I think he's a big part of the, the Canucks' future, kind of that second wave of second tier of prospects or young guys behind, not just prospects, but young guys behind Horvat, Pedersen, and Bester, and Hughes. You need this next wave of guys like the Vertanens, like the Gaudets, who can still push for spots, push, you know, make the lineup better overall, and yet be solid contributors in the middle of your lineup. Canucks fans, leave a comment below. Love to know if you agree with my grade of C plus, an average mark. For Adam Gaudet, what did you like about his season? What didn't you like about his season? And what do you think the ceiling is for him going forward? Like I said, leave a comment below. I'll try my best to read, react, and reply. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Tomorrow I will look at the mercurial one, the polarizing one, one Nikolai Godobin. Have a great day. Enjoy the Canu not Canucks. I wish. Enjoy the playoffs tonight. I'll check in check in with you tomorrow. God bless. Go Canucks. Go.